Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Sorry I can't be with you today in person. I bet we're all wishing we could be together in person. My name is Rochelle Turner. I'm Head of Research and Insight for Mashair. For those that don't know Mashair, we're a sustainable design firm. We're also a certified B Corporation and use our business as a force for good. Our aims are to provide the best workplace to care for our environment and to positively help others. As we've been forced to stop, to, to think in this time of COVID, we've been thinking a lot about how we continue and having a lot of conversations with our clients about what is going to happen going forward and thinking about the things that have made us change and the things that have made us act or think or behave differently because of COVID. And some of those things might be things that we want to take with us going forward, that we might not want to go back to our old ways, that we might want to find new ways through. And looking at what are those attitudes and what are those behaviors requires a little bit of data. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. It also takes a little bit of thinking and context. And hopefully some of that will also get you thinking. There's not enough time to go through it all today. So please do get in touch if any of this strikes a chord with you and, and you would like more information. There is heaps of information behind all of this and I just have a short period of time today. I'd like to start though with this quote from Antonio Guterres, the UN Secretary General. And he's talking about how this time of COVID gives us an opportunity to come out of this crisis with a stronger focus on being much more equal and having more inclusive and more sustainable economies and societies that then provide a greater level of resilience against some of the issues and challenges that we are likely to face in the future. Looking at some of the data that we've got, I'd just like to look at this priorities of Americans and this dichotomy between fear on the one hand and hope on the other, because it is this great fear this fear of this unseen virus that came from nowhere, that stopped us in our tracks, that's causing so much fear of not only the virus itself, but of, of other people, of going out, of touching things, of having the kind of life that we had before. And some of that's been forced upon us, but some of that is things that we are putting out from ourselves. And this fear of staying safe from infection is the essential priority and it's going to dominate how behaviors change going forward and therefore how businesses will have to focus going forward. Emotional well-being and finding joy is also up there and finding those opportunities to connect with people, to provide them with that escape, that relaxation, and the opportunity to feel joy at a time when they feel immense stress and pressure is something that we are likely to see in products and services that are coming to the fore and products or services that are gaining ground in the future. The lockdown has forced us to notice a lot of new things, new things around how we've been spending money and thinking about the things that we used to spend money on in the past, we might not be able to spend money on in the future. And of course, a lot of that reason is because there's a huge financial hardship that people have faced because of COVID and may continue to face in the future. But for a lot of people, it's just because it was a force of habit. And research shows that habits take about 66 days to form. And many of us have been in lockdown for far longer than 66 days, myself included, and here in the UK. We've been seeing cleaner air outdoors. And scientists in China have shown that about 25% drop in CO2 emissions over China in the first quarter of this year. That gets noticeable because it means that people can breathe better and can feel better and, and aren't feeling dirty in, in the way that they perhaps were before. We value food and other essentials more because it's more difficult to stand in the line for a grocery store or wait for that delivery. And for a lot of people, there's been a sense of stronger community in their area seen hashtag COVID kindness and a lot of brands really stepping up and coming to the fore. And alternatively, those that haven't come to the fore really being chastised by consumers and, and really having to think about, 
do I want to shop with those brands again because this is the way that they've been treating customers or treating staff. At Mashair, we look a lot around how the pattern and the cycle of travel is. We advise a lot of our clients around the pre, the on, and the post side of travel. The happiness that's generated at each of these different phases and how you can connect with customers in different ways because of the importance that each of these phases places in the consumer's overall traveler journey. We see though that there are different opportunities to speak to people in different ways. The pre-phase for people, for companies, is to assure these concerns around safety and cleanliness and the practicalities around how they're going to move people around. To get people traveling again, people have to feel before they're booking that this is a company that seems to have it under control, that this is a company that has all the plans in place, that will be able to tell me how many people are on this trip, how I can social distance, how I can behave, how I will be kept safe because of the assurances that are made. Now, some of these companies, the hotel chains like Hilton are, are joining up with the Mayo Clinic and Lysol to provide this, these extra assurances to help ensure that these people will be kept safe in the hotels. And, and there's a lot of this collaboration that's happening because people want to see third party and other verifying, not just the views of one company that they may travel with. On the trip, and this is something that concerns me, is how do we maintain this sense of hospitality that tourism is based on? How do we maintain smiles in cultures where we can't or might find it difficult to read facial expressions otherwise? How do we ensure social distancing when in many places we just want to meet people have hugs, gather together, and, and have an experience that requires us to all be together. How will that experience be able to continue in a way to ensure that the essence of travel continues in a slightly different and slightly more sanitized way? On the post side, how can we provide reassurances to people that they were right to travel, they were right to get out, when others might be saying, I'm too fearful and I don't want to go outside, or I worry about not you because you have been somewhere else and you might be contagious or contaminated in some way. How can we provide reassurances that actually the things that people are doing on those trips are benefiting the communities, that are benefiting people, and that are providing good in those destinations with the dollars that they're spending? From an industry perspective, how can we do more to provide this greater evidence of tourism being a force for good? To really show, not just from an economic perspective, and I used to do that for a living, the economic benefits and the number of jobs created. We need to go beyond that. We really need tourism to show how it is being that force for good, how it is protecting wildlife, how it is protecting resources, how it is creating really good jobs, how it is ensuring that communities can send their children to school and that they will then grow on and build those communities in the right way. That tourism isn't just an extractive industry that is building piles of waste and using resources, that we are contributing to places. We all saw pictures uh, over the last few years of, of destinations that were just overwhelmed by tourism. And tourism was this huge success story if you look at numbers alone. But we can't have that anymore. And we won't at the moment, of course. But as we build back, we need to build back stronger. We need to ensure that tourism is at the heart of destinations and that we develop tourism away from those hotspots to really enhance the experience and to spread the benefits. And on the post side, how we gather traveler feedback to support long term and to comfort those travelers to ensure that we're listening that we're constantly listening as businesses to what are the things that people like, what are the things that they don't like, and we build that brand trust. There's a saying these days of glass box brands, and that glass box brands are companies that there's nowhere to hide anymore. Social media is pervasive, and whether it's people from the inside telling you stories about what's happening, or people from the outside, 
listening in and, and criticizing the company. We need to have open and honest companies that are transparent about their behaviors and building that brand, brand trust will absolutely come from that. The products and experiences of the future will be, will be different, but products do make money in downturns. The products that fill those needs. And we saw some great examples in tourism from Airbnb and Uber over the last financial downturn, really building up and look at them now. But companies that make or pay, save people money, we will have less money, a lot of us, and we will be looking for the best experiences and those that are giving us the right opportunities. There will also be a lot of people for whom this has been a good crisis, that they've had to save or spend less, that they've sent, uh, sent, um, spent down their, their, their mortgages and, and they've saved a lot of money. And the opportunity for them to get out and to have multi-generational holidays or multi-family holidays is, is a real opportunity for them once we are allowed to travel. A lot of people have been learning new skills and behaviors because of lockdown. How can travel help hone those new skills and create new products that really generate that excitement and entertainment for those to carry on and do those? Of course, we need to make life healthy and comfortable and lots of opportunities there and socialize and communicate and help people feel good about themselves as well as safe. There are lots of opportunities from COVID. We have to think of the positive, but we also have to think about how we might want to change and not just recreate what we did before, but really think about how we can be better, how we can be better travelers, how we can be better travel companies, and how we can be better at communicating and being part of the societies that we're living in. Thank you, and I hope we can do something thoughtful together. Thanks very much.